Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a video that honestly makes me nervous. I'm sure you can tell by the title of the video that we are just going to be answering questions that I have avoided. And I just thought that this would be fun. I just came up with this idea and I was like, you know, there's always questions that you kind of avoid that you don't want to like talk about. And I feel like right now, especially during this quarantine time, why not get to know me a little bit better or know the things that I never normally want to talk about? Um, so you guys asked a ton of questions on my Instagram story, so thank you for participating in that. And if you guys aren't following my Instagram, you definitely should. It's just Gretchen Garrity. Link down below. It always is in the description if you want to follow me. I love posting on there. I've been having a lot of fun posting fun stuff during quarantine especially. Also, if you're not subscribed, do that. It's so weird if you are a YouTuber and you look at like your analytics and you can see like half the people that are watching your videos aren't even subscribed. So like... You definitely should be and yeah we are just gonna hop right into the questions I've avoided oh also last thing I'm filming in my car right now just because you know during quarantine it can be a lot like all being under one roof and I just didn't want to like make a lot of noise and just get in anyone's way so I'm like why don't I just go film in my car I can have some like alone time in the peace and quiet and yeah you know what i mean so that's why we're filming in here i'm not going anywhere i just i'm out front sitting in my car so let's hop right in i try to do the really juicy ones towards the beginning of this video because i know that's why you guys are here and um yeah i would say this was probably the number one ass thing or just up there so we are going to address it first thing basically it all has to do with what has happened with past friends that I've had and I'm not going to be saying their name specifically but if you guys have been with me for a while I'm sure you know who I'm talking about and yeah I would never do that and be like this person blah 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 and start talking crap about them on my YouTube channel like no um but I will say that if there has been any of my friends in my personal life that you have seen me like post with a lot on my social media in the past that's like one hard thing of social media it's like in normal life you can grow apart from people and like go your separate ways and whatever and it's normal but something about social media like tethers you to that person and so when I'm not around that person much anymore spending time with them talking with them we've grown apart whatever it is everyone's like where did that person go and it's like okay you do realize that people grow apart right or sometimes things happen and the last thing I'm going to do is come on here and tell you like drama that I've had with someone so yeah all I will say is that if there's friends that I've had in the past that are all over my social media and they're not anymore we've probably grown apart maybe stuff has happened and you guys have heard me talk about my podcast specifically how I feel like I'm just someone that's really honest with myself about my friends and like the circle of people that I spend my time with and if I'm friends with someone that I feel like we start to have really different like morals and values and we're kind of on like different paths or I don't agree with what they're doing or simply if I'm not happy being around them or they kind of like bring me down then I'm like I just reevaluate and I'm like wait why why am I friends with this person if they like make me feel sad all the time or like are rude to me or like whatever it is so yeah that's all I'm gonna say about that but um you guys know the type of person I am I'm just very honest so that's that about that or the simple answer is like someone like Sasha you guys know one of my really good friends he lives in New York and so when we were at BU we were together all the time because we lived like across the street from each other and now we live in two different cities so it's like obviously some people you just like not like lose touch with but you are physically separated by so much distance and those are the best type of friends though that you can just pick up where you left off like whenever you catch up again I can think of like a couple of friends in my personal life that even though we don't talk every day we pick up where we left off and like whenever we have a FaceTime or a call or see each other in person it's like the best thing ever so anyway that's enough about that this question says do you believe in waiting until marriage so I'd say another huge question I got asked was all about sex intimacy life stuff like that and just that whole realm of things and I really have just stayed away from this for so long because I'm sure you guys can understand I have younger viewers like I'm not trying to come on here and be really rated R so that is like the main reason that's just not really who I am I just I don't know would get uncomfortable talking about that um but what I will say because I did say this in a video you guys know my good friend Brooke Michio she does YouTube and we did like a QA and a for her channel and she said that she had so many questions about that too so we both kind of just talked about I guess our opinion so what I will say 
is the whole wait until marriage thing. This is all you're going to get out of me. Is I think that if you are waiting till marriage or if you have waited until marriage, I think people waiting for marriage, like you do you, good for you. And if you're not waiting for marriage, also you do you, good for you. Like I just feel like it's such a personal, private thing and everyone's entitled to their own opinions about it. And I don't like people shaming each other either way. If you're waiting, if you're not waiting, whatever it is, it's like literally you do you sister. I don't know why people care about each other. It's just a very personal, private thing, like I said. So yeah. That's how I feel about that and it's just like whatever you personally feel is right for you um, Do that, you know Okay, third question is more tea on college relationships before max So you guys are just really curious over there. You're just really nosy. No, I understand why I'm very like open and honest So it's like it's natural that you would want to know more and what I will say about that is anyone that was a part of my life any boy that I was you know having any romantic relationship with um between the ex-boyfriend which you guys saw over my youtube and now max we're very serious and we always talk about our future like I don't know it's just very clear to me that we will be together for a very very long time um but anyone in between it's just like it wasn't right and I knew that deep down and so that's why it never like lasted long we did we weren't like compatible i was never gonna show them on youtube you know what i mean it was just like the dating process when you're trying to figure out like who you mesh with this person could be someone you spend your life with like a boyfriend and i just knew deep down that it wasn't right and so i'm happy that i never settled on like again my standards or morals or values or anything like that and look where i ended up so there's not really tea on any of that. Um, it was just me like living my life in college and trying to figure it out. So yeah. And there wasn't like tons of boys that I was dating. You guys know me. Like I'm very just, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I meant to say this earlier, you guys, but because I know I'll get questions. I get questions every video that you guys can see my phone. Everyone's like, where's our phone case from? And I feel like I've said it a million times now, but for the past couple years, the only phone case that would be on my phone are from Case Defy. This one's from Case Defy. I feel like I'm always switching them up because I have so many cute ones from them. And I thought it was really cute because it's like, it's so weird that it's May now, but it's like spring, I guess almost summer-ish. And so I thought this one was like really fun for the spring. And then this one's actually called the Impact Case, you guys. So I love it because it has military grade drop protection, if you didn't know that. I feel like everyone knows how protective these are, but it's amazing because you can see how like slim and sleek it is. It doesn't make your phone like a big, thick, ugly contraption it's just like slim and cute looking still and i know it's you can literally drop it over six feet and it still stays safe like my phone has like flown down the staircase before and stuff like that and i always want to drop it to show you guys but i literally can't because if you can see you can kind of see through it the back of my phone is shattered because i dropped it the day after i got it the day before my phone cases came so anyway the back of my phone is still shattered but i'm so happy and just blessed for these cases i'm feeling lucky because they have saved my phone and made the front still stay very clean and not cracked um so yeah i love case defy so much you guys already know i know so many of you guys have used my code but if you guys go to case defy.com slash gretchen you will get 20 percent off any phone case and also i think you can use the code 20 gretchen um because a lot of you told me that that's worked for you so it's always been the same 20 percent off 20 gretchen case defy.com slash gretchen yeah, you can get any phone case to your heart desire. I also love the ones, and this one, it's funny because this one isn't customized at all. So yeah, they're just the best. They're my favorite. And I will have them linked down below. And moving on. Number four, this question says, do you guys smoke? So initially I was going to film this video with Max and I was like, ask any questions you think we've avoided. But I noticed a lot of them were kind of for me specifically or like asking me about past friendships and stuff. So I was like, hey, we don't need to like film this video together. So you're just gonna sit there and I talk about stuff that just has to do with me, you know? So that's why I just figured I would record this by myself. Um, but this one I guess for is for both of us. And it's so funny because no, we don't smoke and I don't really know what else to say. It's funny because I feel like if we did, I like wouldn't put this question in here because it would make me feel weird saying that like we did on the internet. But the reason I'm talking about it is because we don't and just never have. 
and I don't know I don't really feel like I'm missing out I don't really see the point of it. I'm not judging you if you do like go ahead sis like that's just so my mentality about everything like I not that I don't care it's not like I am like a not caring person I'm a caring person but I just like don't care with what other people I don't concern myself with what other people are doing if you want to smoke if you want to drink if you want to have sex before marriage or wait till marriage like you do you like whatever makes you feel good like live your life sis that's just my mentality but no I don't smoke and again not judging you if you do I'm pretty sure it's legal in mass where I live so yeah just never done that <laughs> this question says are you still friends with Maggie and Emma and yes I don't know why everyone wants like the tea like yes we're still friends I'm sure you guys see us like interacting on social media all the time um I feel like some people were like you haven't hung out with them in so long and I'm like I haven't hung out with any of my friends in so long we've been in quarantine for two months like what do you mean so yeah there's I, everyone wants the tea there's no tea like we're friends everything's good and I miss them so bad I literally text them we have a little group chat like I text them all the time I was texting Maggie yesterday how I had a dream and she was in it like we're still friends you know and I can't wait till I can see them when all of this is over and see their new apartments and just everything and I miss me and Emma would always go hang out with my friends at BU because she's like college age and like my friends that were still in college age and I miss yeah just hanging out with her and like all my friends at BU and like going to soul with Maggie and yeah I miss them so yes we're still friends this question says was there hazing to get into your sorority see I tried to do the juicy ones towards the beginning you guys and now I'm getting chatty but no there was no hazing to get into my sorority that's why I'm just like I mean I don't know how it is everywhere like I'm sure I know hazing is like a thing so I can't speak for other sororities or other colleges or whatever but no not at all I didn't experience any hazing and my sorority experience at BU was amazing and I made so many lifelong friends through that and it's so crazy to me that if I because I was so scared to rush like I didn't really want to do it and it's so crazy to me that like if I never did my best friend Natalie is my big like never would have met her my little Julia one of my best friends like never would have met her my grand little Audrey Louisa Kate was in my sorority like she's one of my best friends you guys know so it's just so crazy that I never would have branched out and met like more people at BU than just like my little circle that I came in to be with if that makes sense okay also sorry I noticed some people someone commented on my video the other day they're like I hate how youtubers always say if that makes sense and I feel like that's something that just comes out of my mouth now but I am the type of person that like talks before I think I'm just very like extroverted I know that's an extroverted thing and um, in my head how I mean things is sometimes different than how it comes out of my mouth so sometimes I'm like Gretchen that didn't even make sense so then I'm like sorry if that made sense so that's why I'm always saying that this question says do you ever feel like you're spending too much time with Max with the fear of losing the romance and when I saw this I was like yes like yes that's something that I do fear because especially now you guys know we like he like lived in my apartment with me over the summer a little bit with Taylor I feel like I'm saying this confusing he like lived with us for a little and then it was because he was about to go play hockey for his first professional season so then we were long distance and then now it's like being back together and especially in quarantine when we're like together and there's like nothing else to do or no other places to go really to spend our own time it's like we are spending a lot of time together so that that is something that scares me um and I feel like any couple that lives together that's something that you kind of have to work on and I feel like we've just been really communicating communicative about it we've just been very like adult about it and like I'll tell him I'm like Max spending time around each other is a lot different than like spending time together like we'll both be in his childhood bedroom and he'll be like playing video games and I'll be on my computer and I'm like I miss you like I haven't seen you all day and he's like what do you mean I'm right here and I'm like no but we haven't like spent like spent quality time together so I think it's just being like meaningful about like your actions around them <laughs> Like I'm using big words but do you know what I'm saying um and I think it's also just like once you've been together for a while and we've only been together like a year and a half but I think just keeping the romance alive we like to say that we're always in the honeymoon phase and we're like never leaving the honeymoon phase you guys know the honeymoon phase like in the very beginning of a relationship when they can do no wrong and you're like oh my god like that was so gross how you just ate all that food like I love you that's so cute of you you know what I mean like nothing bothers you um but we like to say we're still in that and I think it's just again being like 
really meaningful and we'll try to set up cute date nights where we literally will just go sit in the car and like eat take out food now because that's pretty much all you can do or just like little things like that like the other day I wrote him a note in the morning and I was like congratulations congratulations you are cordially invited to a Chipotle date with Gretchen yeah and we went and we picked up Chipotle and like ate it on his back porch so it's just like doing fun little cute gestures that just go the extra mile you know it's the little things wow I'm chatty in this video um okay this one says do you actually use products you were sponsored by and this one I really want to talk about because yes oh my goodness you guys I just that's just crazy to me I mean I'm sure and I guess I understand where your concern comes from because I'm sure I could like think of influencers in the past that will promote stuff and I'm like what the heck that stuff's like junk like they don't use that you know but this one was just so crazy to me because it's like, yes. Like, I only say yes to brands. I like. I can think of, like, numerous brands this week that I was like, mm-mm. Like, I don't use it anymore, even if I've used it in the past. Like, I now am on to this stuff. And I think that's normal, too. Like, the stuff that you use in your everyday life and, like, clothes that you wear and stuff like that changes. Like, we all grow and change and evolve. So, I'm sure if you found me a brand that I was sponsored by six years ago on YouTube since I've been around for so long, it's like, okay, maybe I don't wear those swimsuits anymore because now I wear different ones that I just discovered you know but it's like in the moment I will only work with brands that I've already used I really love okay sorry my memory card is running out of space but yes I will only work with brands that I really use I really love I stand for their whole message I just like feel like I'm very you guys know how honest and transparent I am like this video for example case to buy I love their phone cases they're the only phone cases I use why wouldn't I say yes to working with them like this is a dream come true I love their phone cases and I think they have the best designs there's like so many artists like collabs on there with like so many beautiful designs are so protective they're the best phone cases ever so it's like you know what I mean it's like a win-win like I just always think of it as like if you guys had like your most favorite brand, say it's the Soul Cycle sweatshirt, and then Soul Cycle's like, hey, wanna work together and you can like promote our new sweatshirts? You would be like, oh my god, like that's the best thing ever. Like that's how I am about all the brands I work with. So I hope you guys know that, but I'm sure you do because you know, or like these earrings. Or wait, I love whenever I get to do videos or Instagrams with them because it's like that is literally the main jewelry that I wear is all from them. I love their stuff. Okay, now that I've talked about that enough, because um, that's just so crazy to me when people think that it. That it's just like for money like that's the last thing that I care about it's like I love the brand so much and what they're doing and their products and that's like the core of it if that makes sense okay this says, do you regret going to college since you don't use your degree this I feel like I've talked about before most of these questions are just questions that I haven't answered before or that specifically I've avoided like the juicy ones earlier um but some like this I feel like I may have talked about but I just wanted to talk about it because I feel like this is one I kind of get a lot and while I may not be using my degree in a traditional sense like to get a corporate job it's like I still feel like I'm using my degree you guys like I got a business degree in marketing and it's like that's essentially what I'm doing every day with my own business on my youtube channel on my instagram for my podcast whatever and so it's like i learned so much at bu that i really would like to say i bring into my business ventures in my everyday life and even though i'm not using it in like i said like a traditional sense i think that's okay and i'm like living my best life and doing something that makes me so happy right now um but i'm sure if i wasn't doing this i would go get like a kick-ass marketing job and I would love it because it's just so interesting to me and yeah and I don't even think that's off the the slate I don't know what I'm trying to say I don't even think that's not in the deck of cards for me like I think it very well could be in the future to go get a marketing job so yeah I'm just very open to it right now just living my best life but yeah like I love marketing I think it's very interesting so yeah, I feel like we talk about that later too though. This is how do you have so many close friends? And she said close in all caps. And I think that can be um, maybe just the way that you look at me in my life. Like I, again, I just feel like so many people look at YouTubers or Instagram influencers or whatever and they're like, oh, their life's so perfect. They have so many friends. They have so many this and that, da, da, da. And it's like, you see the highlight reel. We all know that. You don't see like behind the scenes. And I would say I'm someone that has see I wouldn't even really agree with that I would say that I have close friends but not that many like I would so much rather have quality over quantity if that makes sense um 
And I'd say I do have a handful of people that I consider myself very close with. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I feel like you just, like anything in life, you just get out what you put into it. And especially now in quarantine, since you can't see your friends, but you do have maybe more time on your hands, I find it that much more important to like hit up those friends that I haven't talked to in so long. And like my grand big the other day, we don't talk that much because she's in New York. Like I haven't seen her in so long. And we FaceTime forever. And it was like so good to talk to her. FaceTime an old friend today. You will feel so good and fulfilled like your heart will just feel like happy like your serotonin levels will be like through the roof like you're just gonna be like wow this is the best day because it's like connecting with an old friend talking with your best friend your family whatever is just like the best feeling I'm getting sidetracked but basically what I want to say is how I think I have so many close friends if you will call it that is because I just put in the effort to keep up with them and talk with them and especially when you graduate college like me and you're in a different city or you're literally in quarantine and you can't see your friends it's like then it's just on you to keep in touch with them and text them and FaceTime them and be interested in their lives. And I feel like I'm someone that's so like interested in what all my friends are doing anyway that I'm always like bothering them being like, oh my God, you didn't tell me what happened with that boy on that date or whatever. Like I just wanna know cause I'm just interested in them and love them and care about them. So yeah, that's what I have to say about that. If you want more close friends, um, keep up with the people in your lives and show them that you care and yeah and like for example my best friend Hannah from home she went to VM I went to BU we have barely got to see each other as much as we did like in high school you know but we would make the effort like in college we'd always visit each other each year at some point and like she oh wait I didn't talk about it in a video but I posted my Instagram story she found like this golden retriever stuffed animal in her house and she packaged it up with a cute little note and sent it to me during quarantine and I'm like you don't understand how much you just made my day like you just made me so happy this is the best day ever because she knows that we've been wanting a golden retriever puppy she's like hopefully this can hold you over until you get a real one like I was thinking of you so it's like literally the littlest things you guys just yeah I'm getting sidetracked but that was really sweet of her shout out Hannah I love her and it's like those type of people you know are just gonna be your best friends for life because like we met in seventh grade and became friends and we've been like best friends ever since you know even though we went to college in different cities and yeah it's just, like we just put in the effort to keep up with each other okay wow that one was a long answer this says when did you discover that max uses two different voices i thought this was really funny but if you guys have been keeping up with my youtube or my instagram or whatever seeing max in my content you would know that with me i feel like just with each other we talk in more like high lovey voices but that's just like I feel like that's not specifically an us thing. I think that's like scientifically proven that when you're with someone that you love, you like talk in a high, like cheerful voice because you just are like happy. Um, but then whenever he's in like a hockey interview, I feel like that's what I notice it the most whenever he's like in interviews or even just talking about hockey, his hockey voice comes out and it's like this deep, manly, like Canadian accent voice. And it's just so funny because he really does have two different voices. So I think I learned quite early on whenever I would go to his hockey games and it would be like him on the jumbotron and like a um between periods like an interview and he'd be like oh yeah pucks on net and I'd be like what is going on like that's not how you speak so he really has like two different voices I almost think he has three because he has one that when he's with me he has one just like normal life with like my friends or like my family his family and then he has the hockey voice so <laughs> there's different voices <laughs> but I don't even think he means to it's just like how it is Okay, and then this I actually should have put earlier. There was a bajillion questions, like there always is, about when we're getting engaged, when we're getting married. This one says, who's going to be your maid of honor? You have so many close friends, like that. So, what I will say about getting engaged in marriage is when it happens is when it will happen. <laughs> like, we don't know. Like, we talk about it time to time. But the other day, he was like, where do you want your ring to be from? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even know. And you know what that says to me is that I'm so not ready. Like... If you asked me, I'd say yes, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like, we just are so young, and I mean, I'm 23. I know a lot of people get married younger than me or at 23 or whatever, just, but for me personally, I know it's different for everyone. I just feel too young and not ready, and I mean, we've been dating for a year and a half, so like just give us some time you know but I just think when it happens is when it will happen we always talk about it, and I'm sure it will be max, just not anytime really soon to answer your question oh and obviously I wanted to say this obviously my maid of honor is gonna be Lucy I have a twin sister like she that's what she's made for like 
yeah, who else would it be other than my twin sister? And it makes it easy because I do have a lot of close friends. I would feel like bad picking one over the other. Um, so that makes it easy. Lucy's always been my built-in best friend anyway, as my twin sister. Okay, this question says, are you afraid of being alone? And I like this one because I'm sure I've addressed it before. You guys know that in just in general, like in everyday life, I hate being alone. Like I'd rather always be with people. Even though now as I get older, I can really appreciate my alone, peaceful time. Like coming out in the car right now to film this, I'm like, wow, like I just get to go like be with myself. Also, I'm talking to you guys though, so I feel like I'm kind of spending time with people. But okay, I'm getting sidetracked. Are you afraid of being alone? Yes, definitely. And I think deep down, everyone can admit that you're afraid of being alone. No one wants to end up alone in like relationships, friendship wise, romantically, family type of way. Do you know what I mean? Like no one wants to be alone. Everyone wants to be loved and yeah. So I am extremely afraid of ending up alone, but hopefully with my family and network of friends and boyfriend currently that won't happen. Okay. This question says, if YouTube didn't pay you, what would you be doing? Oh, so this is what it was I was thinking of earlier when I was talking about how I think I still use my college degree right now but if I were to like really use it to get a job so what would I be doing if YouTube didn't pay me definitely just in a marketing job like I said I think marketing is extremely interesting and that's what my degree was in it was almost like common sense to me I feel like it kind of is for everyone like you're just like oh that makes sense but yeah I just find it really interesting so I'm sure I would be in a marketing job or I always think about having my own brand or company or something like that um because obviously I was in business school and like owning a business sounds really fun so maybe one day this question says why did you never hop on the food combining trend so I think I know I know I talked about this I think over the summer in like a QA, and a because everyone was like oh my god why aren't you doing food combining I know so many friends are da, da, da. and I just said I'm so happy for them that it works for them and I think I know everybody is so different what works for you it doesn't work for me it doesn't work for Max you know what I mean like some people are vegan some people well some people have to be gluten free and vegan if they have allergies and you know what I mean um ice cream hurts my stomach ice cream might not hurt your stomach do you know what I mean what I'm trying to say is everyone's so different and for me that just immediately I was like ah, I don't really think that's gonna work for me I never tried it just because you guys know kind of the history that I've had with the relationship with food body image I think that's literally the next question on here too um so I was like that's just something that I feel like I would have to think about too much I can't really have like rules or restrictions or numbers or just yeah with what I'm eating because it's just too much for me to think about and I feel like drives me crazy and makes me go back into that old mode of being like obsessive so for really for me the only thing that I can really do is eat whatever I want whenever I want listen to my body and that's just how it has to be for me or else I go crazy so yeah that's just why <laughs> I never did that um this says do you regret rowing and I think you specifically mean at BU because you guys know I was on the lightweight rowing team my freshman year at BU and if you don't know I have a whole probably like hour-long video about that so <laughs> um no you would think that I do and I guess I regret rowing I don't regret rowing I guess maybe I, I regret like things that came about because of it in college um for example like just body image issues and like a really like obsessive like eating patterns and behaviors like I don't I regret all of that that came with it but I actually don't regret rowing because at the time I loved it and it taught me so much and even like the bad things that came from it I feel like I just like overcoming them I became so much stronger and really like who I am and it made me like who I am today so I try to say that I don't really regret anything because I wouldn't be me without going through you know so yeah it really was like the biggest learning experience and taught me more than like anything to this day this says yeah so um the question was body image so i am guessing you're just like asking about it in general and again you can go watch that lightweight rowing video i touch on it a lot in there i think it's the only like video really on my youtube channel but what you really should listen to is on my podcast happy hour podcast with Gretchen Garrity me yours truly um the second episode I just hopped right in with the heavy hitting stuff and I talked all about my relationship with food my body image like how I see myself um 
and issues I've like struggled with all of that and how I've kind of like overcome it and how where I am today and I talk all about that in my second episode of my podcast you should definitely listen to that to this day that's like my most listened episode and I still hear feedback from you guys about it so yes this question says do you ever have times of doubt or anxious thoughts and yes I definitely do I think everyone does I think I'm not alone in that I swear to god my anxious thoughts started and just like I guess anxiety in general like in college towards the end of college but I mean I'm sure I had anxious thoughts before that and I just didn't really know like what it was um and just feeling like really stressed or overwhelmed I feel like is me a lot of times I feel like I'm very easily overwhelmed and I don't like that about myself and I try to work on it but yeah I mean all the time I doubt everything and something that's hard with being so public on the internet is just seeing stuff from complete strangers and then I think about it and I'm like maybe they're right maybe they're seeing something I don't see maybe they're right about like this relationship I have with a friend or like my sister or Max or whatever and I like overthink like crazy and Max is like what are you talking about like I told you guys about living with his family people were like you're really overstaying you're welcome and then I was thinking about it I'm like wait what if they're right what if they're seeing something that I don't see but then Max is like you're going crazy no you're not we love having you here and then I'm like wait you're right like life everything's good like there isn't an issue and I don't know that I just talked for a while but do you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like I get senses of doubt or anxiety from seeing stuff from people that maybe don't have the best intentions in mind for me on um, social medias. Um, but aside from that, yeah, I mean, literally everyone does about everything, but I just try to, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just try to like know deep down the situation and get rid of my thoughts of doubt with like what I really know to be true. You know what I mean? Okay. <clears throat> this says, do you ever need reassurance for Max? And this kind of reminds me of the last one because Max a lot of the time will help me. Like I'll be like, oh, like what about this? And I'm just like a worrier type of person. And he's someone that's so like chill and grounded and relaxed. And he's like, don't worry about that. Like that's not how you think it is or do you know what I mean? And he makes me feel a lot better and um, makes me doubt less and worry less. If that makes sense. But do I ever need reassurance from him? Yeah, all the time. Because <laughs> I'm such a doubter and a worrier over here. No, I think everyone in especially romantic relationships needs reassurance time and time again. Especially if you guys get really comfortable with each other. If you're living together, it can get very like just comfortable and you can feel like roommates so you can be like are you sure you still like are in love with me come kiss me <laughs> no you know what I mean so I feel like you always need reassurance a little bit um but yeah at the end of the day though I am very independent I would like to say or I'm like working on it and not all the time but once in a while yeah reassurance always feels good to the, for them to reassure you and how they feel about you and reassure you that know that they think you're on the right path and doing good things and working hard and yeah more than just like affection just like you always want to be with someone that challenges you and pushes you and you know what I mean <laughs> okay last question I'm getting like in my thoughts and feels over here this says how do you think your life will be different post quarantine and I thought this was a good one to wrap it all up because I feel like life, I mean, life will go back to normal, but I think at the same time, it'll be different for everyone that lived through this quarantine time because I think we're going to appreciate everything that we get to do so much more. Like, I know that I will at least, and that's just kind of how I always look at things. I'm just like very, very like grateful, thankful person, I feel like, but whenever I think about not wanting to work out. I'm like, Gretchen, there are people that are injured that can't work out and they want to work out so bad. So you're complaining because you're like kind of tired. No, go put on your running shoes and go on a run. You're going to feel better after stop being lazy. Like go do it. I hope that motivated some of you by the way, but that's just how I think about it. Like it's not, you have to go on a run. It's like you get to go on a run. You get to wake up and make your bed and clean your room. You get to do your homework. You get to go to college. So stop complaining about it, you know? So that's just how I think how out of quarantine will be it's like you get to go to a bar you get to socialize with your friends you get to eat out like that's such a privilege and don't not realize how grateful you should be for it realize how grateful you should be for it you know what I mean so I think that's how life will be different post quarantine at least for me um but yeah I think those are all the questions that 
we have time for today that I'm gonna answer for you guys. I don't think there was anything else. Like those were all the hard questions. I, there wasn't anything else that I avoided because these are answering the questions that I have avoided. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.